Hello all, welcome back to the new lecture. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about accessing and modifying mule event. As always, I promise you, if you understand this lecture, then you are going to score 100% in this section in your actual mule soft certification exam. So let's start it. Let's start from the basics about mule event object. What exactly happens inside your mule application? There are series of activities uh, which occur when your event source receives a trigger. What is trigger? Trigger is a starting point for your event flow to get triggered. It can be your HTTP request. It can be your VM connector which is listening to queue or it can be just a scheduler or HTTP request. So any of these uh, act as trigger. They their job is to just the start your flow. So when your event source receives this trigger, it generates one mule event object. We will see details about mule event object in a minute. But then when this object is generated, uh, the mule event travels uh, sequentially through all the components of a flow. What is this mule event? Mule event comprises of mule message and variable. If you see this uh, inner square bracket, mule message comprises of attributes and payload and mule event comprises of mule message and variable. Uh, you would have seen this diagram so many times uh, till now, but it is important from exam uh, point of view. In exam, they might ask you some questions. Uh, for example, variable is part of mule message or mule event or what is part of mule message? So uh, it is basic, but yeah, ensure that you know this uh, diagram by heart. Now, uh, what means? Uh, what do you mean by attributes? What is uh, inside attributes? When your trigger request is coming uh, in the mule message, uh, if it is HTTP request, then there can be headers or query parameters or URI parameters or some security um, additions, all those are part of attributes. So uh, those are basically metadata. Uh, and then comes your actual payload. What is payload? Payload is your data. It is your, um, uh, you know, it is something that needs to be processed by your flow. So if you take example of HTTP request, then HTTP post, specifically then in post you whatever you add in the body section would come under payload if you are reading a file then the content of file would, would be part of your payload so that way whatever is the actual data that needs to be processed is always uh, included in the payload uh, this mule event object is immutable what do you mean by immutable every change to an instance of this mule event object results in creation of another instance of mule event object. Whenever any attributes or payload changes, a new instance of mule event is created. Now, if every time new instance is getting created and in the flow in between uh, my processing, if I want to access the uh, instance that was received, then how do I receive it? Because in between flows, it would have been uh, changed. So in that case, what we do is we save this initial uh, or at any instance, uh, whatever state at whatever state you want to save the instance, you save it in the variable. Variable can have um, any kind of data payload or, you know, just variables like you have in C. It can hold anything and it comes to uh, rescue so uh, this variables can be accessed throughout your application across various flows as long as you connect the flows uh, with flow reference let's take first example of flow reference here what i have done is in parent flow i have a uh, mule event consists of attributes payload and variable so here i am showing the original mule event then here i am showing mule event which is being passed from flow reference to the child flow then here is the updated mule event in your child flow and when your flow goes back then 
here is the latest uh, mule event available for logging or uh, transforming so in the exam you will see multiple permutation combination around this um, uh, mule event attribute so uh, it might see ask you questions like what will the value of attributes after uh, having you know flow reference call http request call or vm connector call and uh, same with payload and variable in those case you need to concentrate what is you need to understand uh, in depth what is being passed to child flow what is being updated in child flow and what is being sent back to your parent flow all these three things are extremely important let's start with our first example in this case our mule event consists of original attributes payload and variable when we call flow reference we are passing this original mule event to the child flow so all these attributes payload and variable are accessible in child flow now if you do not do any transformation then these original attributes payloads and variables will be available in your main flow but what if you update them how do you update your mule event how do you transform your mule event if you want to change your attributes you need to use transform if you want to up, uh, replace your payload then you can do it by using set payload within your um, subflow or you if you want to replace your variable or update your variables you can use set variable and then you can update your variables so when you receive original attributes payload and variable and you are using transform attribute set payload set variable you are transforming and updating all this mule event uh, parameters and when you are sending it back to your main flow reference all these three will be uh, updated one so here if question asks if your original attributes or original payload is uh, accessible your answer would be no but another permutation is what if you are not using transform here then your attributes are not getting changed here what if you are not using set payload here then your payload is also not getting changed if you are changing only set variable then only your updated variable will be available in the flow reference uh, in the main parent flow so it depends on what they are doing but all the permutation combinations uh, can be thought from this one diagram so keep this very well in your mind see how the original mule event is being passed to child flow see if it is getting transformed or not see what parameters are getting transformed and what are getting returned back based on that you can answer this question very well now let's see another example where we are calling child flow using flow reference but in this case we are uh, setting payload in target uh, variable here when you pass attributes payload and variable uh, from your mule event to flow reference all of them are accessible as is in your child flow you get all these values as is and you can then update them now if you are using transform activity for updating attributes you can transform your attributes if you are using set payload within your child flow your payload will be uh, updated but in this case when you are updating your payload updated payload is saved in a target variable with the name that is given by you in the target location so uh, and again uh, let's see the last part as well and variable if you are using set variable in your child flow then your variable will be changed but when you go back and you send it to the uh, you send the control back to your main flow reference here how uh, they will be accessible attributes which were earlier present in parent flow would be now changed because you uh, use transform attributes uh, in child flow your payload this payload you updated in your child flow but you saved the updated pay uh, payload in the target variable so your uh, existing parent flow payload would be accessible as is and if you want to access uh, payload from your child flow you can access it using the target variable and in exam question they sometimes might save the target in target variable called as payload but that is payload variable which will be storing child flow not the actual payload uh, which is uh, coming from parent flow 
and then variable so here you will see variables uh, is gray uh, gray and now here it is changed to skin color so these variables are updated here if you are using set variable so there can be so many permutation and combination in exam on this one if they send all these values and they just update set payload to uh, and save it in target variable but they do not use transform they do not use set variable then all these three values will be accessible in your main flow after flow reference as is nothing will be changed if you are using attribute you are uh, uh, if you are just setting variable and uh, you are uh, not uh, doing set payload and you're not doing attributes then only your variables would be uh, changed and uh, those change variables will be accessible here and in case here you uh, had seen in earlier example in set payload if you're not using target variable then your original payload will also be replaced by the new payload see you in the next part we had discussed about mule event object now let's discuss more about http mule uh, event object so in http mule event object uh, you must be using postman or soap or http client arc maybe to trigger your flow event source uh, when it uh, receives that request then it processes it uh, as discussed earlier but uh, in this case uh, what happens is if you see http request object it has header and payload in this mule event object you do not have variables in attributes you can have all the method um, host details or query parameter url parameters and in payload you can actually have your uh, data which needs to be processed but in arc client or postman you never see that you can pass variables right so this concept is very important http mule event object does not have variables in it now let's see what happens when we call http request when we have http request call from parent flow for your child flow let's say here you when you have mule event but when you are sending a request what will be done is in http your variables are never ever passed to your child flow in exam you might see that here they are using particular variable with the same variable name they are uh, you know having some modification in your child flow and asking you what is the variable value it will remain unchanged in your main flow in http request you can never pass variable and uh, when you are passing attribute uh, when you are creating http request for your child flow you are replacing attributes and payload while sending it to child flow so in http request uh, within your next flow will your original attributes and payload be accessible no here only uh, updated attributes and payload are accessible so this i am talking about http post request it has no variables but it does have a uh, payload because you are going to post uh, that information for example uh, post employee information or post book information so your attributes and payload in your parent flow have been updated and when you send response back now here attributes and payload will be updated one but the variables would be unchanged attributes and payloads would be updated one and variables would be unchanged now let's take an example of http request where if we are having http get request now when uh, let's say from your postman or your arc when you are hitting http get request what happens do you send body no because you are getting the results you are not posting anything so it can be get employee id get book reference or whatever in that case what do you pass in request you just pass attributes in the attributes you may pass query parameters like where employee id equal to 1 where book id is equal to 1 to 3 but you can never send body in your http get request so body comes in your payload and query parameter url parameter headers everything that you uh, uh, rest of the things will always come in attributes of http request so in case of http get what happens is 
you are not able to pass any payload you are not able to pass any variable to your child flow so of course your child flow is not able to up update those payload and variable so in your parent flow payload and variable remain unchanged but attributes in request parameter when you uh, do http get call you have to generate new attributes while passing request to child flow so here if you see attributes is in gray and here it is green so they have already got changed here and when you go back to your parent flow your attributes would be the updated one and not the old one now let's talk about vm connector in vm connector if we use publish consume it is a synchronous flow it publishes message on queue and it waits for the response back here we have http listener then we have set payload here we are setting value to high in payload then we have publish consume it will publish the message on queue then it will wait for the response back here in the set payload we are updating the value of set payload to hello now this uh, guy is updating your payload from high to hello and when you response back updated payload equal to hello will be going to your logger and in the logger you will be printing payload as hello if it is just published then whatever you do here it is a synchronous call so it won't be seen and here in logger if you print payload you will see high so in exam keep an eye if it is published consume or only publish uh, in certification exam usually you get uh, questions like you are adding one to your payload so here you have set payload to one then you are set adding it here and then you are coming back another thing here is target variable what happens when you set target variable uh, value so in this case you what you are doing is you are updating uh, the payload updated to hello in your flow variable flow to value variable so rather than replacing the payload you are updating hello in the flow variable and your existing payload remains as is so in this case what you are sending back to your main flow is flow to value variable hello so in logger if you want to access your original payload you can access using payload and if you want to access uh, payload from your child flow you can use it access it using the variable name 